Hi, I'm Dusty with Flame Innovation, home of the Revolve Smokeless Fire Pit. The only smokeless fire pit with damper doors and the only smokeless fire pit that puts heat out off the sides. We're making a video today about our existing Mini-Me that uh, a lot of you have. We've made a pellet adapter for it and then we've made a standalone uh, Mini-Me pellet. This is your uh, pellet adapter. It's all stainless steel, the feet, the bottom, and these rings. This drops down your feed tube, and we'll show you how that works. And you'll install it with the two feet here in the front, because we've got a handy little tool that you can slide in through here. You open the door, and you'll slide it through here, lift it up a little bit, and that'll stop your flow of pellets. So if you're out hunting and you want to move your trailer, you just uh, put that stopper in there, and about 15, 20 minutes later, the stove will be out. You'll be able to move, move around where you want to. And then you just pull it out, relight the stove. It's real easy to light. Um, with your existing Mini-Me, everybody knows we got a water tank for it. You can add a water tank to the Mini-Me pellet. This has a 30-pound hopper on it. It has a burn time, depending on where you have your damper set here. Uh, you'll mostly be burning with your damper right here in the middle, but you can turn it down a little bit, and you can turn it up a little bit. You'll get a burn time of 16, and we've had it go past 24 hours. So... Um, it's a it's a great little efficient hot burning stove or a little bit cool burning stove. You you kind of can decide where you want to where you want to damper it. So when we install this uh, pellet adapter, you'll open the lid of the Mini Me pellet, or you open the lid of the existing Mini Me. And by the way, we've got extra hoppers. We'll do a video on those at a, uh, in a couple days. We've got a 10-pound hopper, which is what this hopper is. We've got a 20-pound hopper, and we've got a 30-pound hopper. So you'll have burn times anywhere from 8 to up to 24 hours or longer um, if you have the existing Mini-Me with a taller tube that uh, will burn Presto logs, split wood, that kind of thing. So what we'll do is we'll take this and we'll drop it down where our feet are towards the center. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to grab... This other one here, this has probably got, I don't know, a couple hundred hours of burn time on it. Uh, you can see it's it's discolored, but it's not worn. And the nice thing about these, uh, they're about $50. Uh, if it ever does burn out, you can replace it. You'll also see where the heat transfer is here. So that lets you know that we're only burning in the tube from here down and in the fire pot. It's totally safe when you'll look down your your feed tube or look down through your hopper you'll see brand new pellets just sitting right here on the edge so it that you know that's a question we get asked a lot does it burn up in the tube and the answer is uh not never ever because something could happen it's never happened to us but anything can happen so we're trying to avoid that but uh, anyway what you do is you'll open the door and you'll take your fire poker and lay it across the top of your bricks like so and then we'll take this and we'll drop it right down the feed tube. Just like so, we'll catch it. And then we'll just lift it up and we'll pull out our fire poker. And now it's sitting here inside of the fire pot and it's ready to be filled with pellets and lit. So we'll do that here in just a second. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and light the Mini-Me pellet. It's real simple. We use a torch. Um, it takes about uh, 20, 30 seconds of, uh, with the heat on the pellets for them to take off. Um, you can use gel if you want to on the pellets. You can use fire starter, but the, the thing is you got to get the pellets going. You don't want them to just sit there and smoke and wait for it. You don't need to blow on it, any of that. Just uh, put some fire starter in there or use a torch. It's really pretty simple. So we're going to open the door, have our damper set right about here in the middle, and then uh, we'll go ahead and show you how we light it. So we're going to put some heat here to the left side, and I do it until we char all the pellets, get them, get them good and black, you see the uh, flames kind of coming up there, and then uh, we'll move over to the right side, and we'll get, uh, it's windy out here, so Inside, normally it just drafts right out. You don't get any smoke out the door. But uh, we'll do it some here on this side. We'll grab some here in the front. And the whole thing is, is like I said, you want to get it 
so that all of your pellets are lit when you close the door that you still have a flame. So we'll give it just another couple seconds here and we'll close the door and see if we still have a flame. And we don't, so we'll light just a little bit more here. The wind's not helping out here, but it's always windy in Post Falls, Idaho. So if you don't like wind, don't move here. There we go. We got a flame. So what's going to happen is water is a byproduct of combustion. So you're going to see some, some uh, moisture form up on your glass. Um, we clean the glass with a little razor blade. It's the easiest way to clean it. But uh, uh, the Mini-Me pellet owners or the Mini-Me uh, existing Mini-Me owners, um, they clean their, their glass with a razor blade, uh, burning your pellets uh, because you have so much more flame and so many more things on fire than just the log the glass actually stays cleaner with the pellets than it does with the logs. So you'll see that condensation. Um, that's the moisture off of the fuel as well as the byproduct of combustion, but you'll see that condensation start to dry. And this thing really takes off fairly quick, quickly. Um, you'll be up to, uh, you know, 285 to 300 degrees on the top and just a matter of maybe uh, seven, eight minutes. And after about 10, 12 minutes, you'll you'll hit about 450 500 degrees or more uh, you can turn up your damper a little bit more at startup if you want but you've got to be careful not to turn it too far um, the only reason it goes really far to the right is if you're up at a higher elevation you're going to need more air but at, at different elevations you'll kind of find your sweet spot and you'll you know you'll learn the stove and see how how to burn it and where you want to burn it for for temperature wise uh, we took the pipe off of this. It probably had, I don't know, close to 200 hours of burn time on it, probably more, and looked inside that pipe. Um, we'll take a picture of it and show you the inside. It's just, just a little bit of soot. There's no creosote or anything in there at all. It lights best with a clean pot, so if you let the stove go out, if you've been burning for a few days, you know, two, three, four days, uh, let the stove go out if you're burning 24-7 and uh, clean out your pot. It burns better when there's uh, no ash in there. If you start it in the morning and let it go out and then go to start it the next morning and let it go out, you'll have some ash buildup. So it always lights easier when, when the pot is clean, but if you don't clean it, it'll still burn. It just takes a little bit longer for it to get the temperature. Okay, so we've been going about uh, 10 minutes here, 11 minutes. You can see different places on the top. We're all over 400 degrees. I'm Dusty with Flame Innovation. Thanks for watching our video and look forward to the one where we show you how the hoppers work.